Welcome to the Dust of Life podcast with me, Sean, and Sam Stewart. Good in that, Sean. Good introduction. And today on the show, who have we got with us, Sean? Keno from the trip. Yeah, from J7. Keno Henry from J7. We are. Uh, this is going to be the last one, I think, for the J7 boys. We we sit down, we chat with Keno about his life, uh, about why he got into fitness, what. You know, how he's found his own way within being Kino's cousin, how he's found his own way in the fitness industry and what we can expect from Kino in the future. We have an excellent conversation. So sit back, relax and enjoy our show. So just while we're waiting for Kino, thought we'd uh, make sure that you're all right with school still. Yeah. Yeah, you're excited about this being the last one, mate? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Sean, I've lost you again. Back on. You put, <laughs> you touched the camera off. No, I didn't take the camera, did I take the camera off? Yes. No, so we're just waiting for Kino. He's here now, Sean, actually, Kino. So we're just going to let him in, yeah? You all set for everything, yeah? Yeah. All right, my guy. <laughs> Don't be nervous. I'm not. I know. I've admitted him. <laughs> Nothing's happening. There he is. Look, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Not one of them is all. Can you hear me now? I can hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Right. Sean, what are you saying, mate? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You all right? Yeah, you, mate. Yeah. yeah, I'm all right, thank you. Look, I'm excited for these boys. I'm excited, man. Look at you coming in all on brand and everything. No, I mean, I've got to represent Stu, where you let me get that down. I've got to represent Stu. You don't, because it's KH Fitness today, not... Yeah, I know, but, yeah, I know, but still, J... J7 is still the, 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 that's the umbrella. <laughs> Jay's the man, yeah. I know. With that, uh, uh, stop that. Right, so you're Kino Henry. Javino, so yeah. we know you from the gym. Yeah. Uh, we think you're a bit of a legend and all that. But uh, you know me and Sean, and you know why we started the podcast and everything. Yeah. So we don't need to go through all that garb. It's just a chat, Kino. It's not like a fucking... Interview today. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're not we're not like news reporters or anything. We just, yeah, we're no worries, we're mate. Chat. So Sean's got a question to start with, aren't you, Sean? Yeah. Why were? Why everyone call you were? Do you know what, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, worm. I don't know how that came about. Jay, for some reason, yeah, he seems to think that I look like a worm. Have you seen Men in Black? Men in Black. Yes. Yeah, and you got those little stick worm, whatever they are, those little insect things. He seems to think I look like one of them, so that's where the name worm comes from. But yeah, and it's stuck now, and everybody calls me with the worm, big worm, but yeah, now it's one of them. It's not with me now, and it's not going nowhere, so I've got to stay with it. That's it, we've had the badger, and now we've got the worm. <laughs> now we've got the worm. Right, Sean, ask your real question now, mate. Have you always been into fitness? So that's a really good question. So with me, fitness is a thing that started from a young age. And that, that again, comes from Jay. So when I was younger, obviously back then, Jay was playing professional cricket at the time. And when I was younger, Jay used to bring me to like Abraham Moss, the, the firing range to, to when he was training. I used to bowl for him. I used to like be the wicket keeper. And then from then, when I started getting into sports and being around him, I started then liking sports and fitness then. And that, that was one of the areas that I've always excelled in. So throughout high school, I played for the football team, the basketball team. I played table tennis. I played badminton. I did any sport you name it, I played it. And I played for all the teams. And then that then carried on into college. I played for the college football team. Um, I did like um, a BTEC level sports qualification then. And then originally, I wanted to go on to being a teacher. So I loved the whole teaching aspect of it. That took a turn along the course. And I went more towards coaching and stuff like that. So I did a lot of... Um, Football, sports coaching, basketball, and did a lot of summer holiday camps. 
and stuff like that. But yeah, sports and fitness has always been the the main path that I followed throughout my life. Anything regards with career wise as well. So I've always worked in industries where it's been sports or fitness based. It's never been anywhere else because that's always been something that I want to pursue as a dream and as something I want to do for the rest of my life, whether it being a teacher, whether it being a football coach or a sports coach, whether it being a fitness trainer, as long as it's something to do with health and fitness, I always knew that that's the path that I wanted to take. But yeah, it all started being around Jane, really. So having that type of role model around you, it, it sort of helped me like see the opportunities and where sports and fitness can take you because there's, there's so many windows. At one point, I wanted to be a physiotherapist because I excelled in science. So I loved learning about the body and how the body functioned and stuff like that. So I wanted to be a physiotherapist at one point. I wanted to learn how to fix people. Do you know what I mean? So, and everything along the course of the time, it just took a turn and I just found myself like going down different paths. And yeah, today, this is where we are. Now I'm a PT four years in and I've, do you know what I mean? I've created um, a, a good rep- um, reputation for myself. If you were a physio, you would have made a fortune of Jacob. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's not too late, those two. It's not too late. No, never too late. Yeah, you're only young. So, like we've said, you and Javino are cousins. You're like his right hand man in the gym. How? Yeah. But that's right. Yeah. He, he's a massive character, both in the community and within the gym. And yeah. All. How have you found your way? And how have you managed to shine yourself in the industry as well? Do you know what, Stu, yeah? When Jay opened J7, and I, I remember saying this to my missus as well, before before J7 like properly started getting its name for itself, I said to my missus, I'm scared that I'm going to walk in his shadow because everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows Jay and knows J7. He, I thought, not that it's about, oh, who's going to have the limelight or not, but I thought that, wow, I'm just going to be seen as Jay's little cousin. No matter what I do, it's going to be, oh, it's Jay's little cousin. Oh, it's Jay's little cousin. So then I had to then change that mindset from, from the get-go. Because I thought, if I think like that, then that's what I'm going to be. If I think, oh, I'm only going to be Jay seen as Jay's little cousin, then that's exactly what's going to happen. But if I think, wow, do you know what? I want to make a, I want to make a reputation for myself. So people see us as two different people. People see Jay and then they see Keno. And that's when the mindset is kind of set in. So then I, I led out on making sure that everybody see me for me. I had to bring a new different style style to training, um, something that Jay wasn't offering, not taking anything away from me because he taught me everything I know. But I just found a different different style of delivering it to people. So now people like, and it, and it shows within the work that I do. So over the years, I've retained so many clients, but that's because I gave them something unique, something that they can't get from anywhere else. So no matter if they went to a different trainer, or a different gym, I still know that them clients are going to come back to me because I know I've gave them something that they can't get from anywhere else. I'm not the average trainer that does the average stuff that you would do in a PT session. Like, I try and make exercise unique but enjoyable. So I try and make people realise that it doesn't matter what your capabilities are, you're still capable. You're still capable of doing anything. So and my clients range from old to young, from... Um, color race male female i train all types of people but that's because i made them all fall in love with fitness see it from a different outlook to make them think that you know what it doesn't matter how old i am i'm still capable it doesn't matter if i don't train five times a week i'm still capable it doesn't matter if i've only just started fitness and i've only just started training they're still capable of doing things but um yeah from the get-go it was Originally, was the plan was to set out and just make sure that I give people something different that they can't get anywhere else. And that's why now KH Fitness is now built a reputation for itself because people know when they come to me, they're going to get a style of training that they haven't experienced, they haven't seen, and they haven't had before. And that's what keeps them coming back and keeps them coming back. And, and hopefully in a few years' time, I can join you know I me. Mean? And, and the plan is to carry on, keep building, and keep trying to share my vision with everybody else. Yeah, so and we see you developing KH Fitness through your like your PT work and all that. And is that is that your way of leaving your mark on the industry? Is that is that is that going to be like a a, a, a no name like people yeah. around Blakely and North Manchester say J Seven? Yeah, because I've 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 always seen the bigger picture. So I I try not stay inside the box too much because if you if you gotta keep that mentality. You're restricting yourself to where the possibilities where you can take it. So when I when I decided to 
brand myself as KH Fitness, still working on these J7, but as KH Fitness, I thought, where do I want to take this business name? Do I just want to be a PT that's just known in Manchester? Or do I want to be, do I want to be known fucking all over? I, that's, that's what I see. I want to be known everywhere. Not just Manchester, not just South or North. I want to be known when people think of PTs or big names in the, in the fitness industry. I want to be one of them names that get brought up and think, right, he's, do you know I mean, I've seen the word that he does. I've seen his boot camp. I've seen his, his, his classes. I've seen his sessions. That's what I want. And, and yeah, that's, that's the vision. So yeah, the vision is to make KH Fitness a, a bigger brand, but a brand that I can take anywhere with me. It doesn't matter where I am as a person. I know that I can still deliver that standard of work to anyone in any area, any level, any standard, any community. But yeah, that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> because, you know, like I say, we watch you and I watch you with Sean when, you, when you're doing the boxing stuff with him. And yeah. That's the most he's engaged in the gym because I know like when you, you're setting things up and you'll say, Sean, do this, this and this. Yeah. About 10 or 15 minutes, he's like looking all over the place and he's not really so trying. So he needs that one-to-one type of focus, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it is. In the boxing, yeah, and you, like, he does it, and you can see him learning all the different learning things. things. And you know what it is, Stu, as well. Like, I've had to learn how to how to read every single client that comes to me. So every single client that I train, I know is different, and they have different needs. They have they have different goals. They, they, their whole path. Is set out differently, so I've got to treat them all differently. I can't treat every treat every client the same because they're not all on the same path. So now, one thing I've learned to do is is build a solid relationship with my clients, understand them more. So it's a lot more than just training. The, if I can, if I can change your mentality and way you're thinking, the whole the whole training side of things becomes a hell of a lot easier because training to me starts mentally first. Before the physical aspects comes in, so before you start thinking about, oh, I'm a strong enough, I'm a fit enough, I'm I'm a quick enough, I'm a, I'm athletic enough. Before any of that comes into play, it all starts off with your mentality first. And if I can change that first before I get you to do anything else, everything else then just falls on it falls into place because your way of thinking now you you now seem to think the way I think. So fitness, a lot of people is daunting to everyone because everyone seems to think, oh. If I go to the gym, I've got to look a type of weight. I've got to be able to lift a certain type of weight. I, they try and fit in, which be part, a fitness journey is not about fitting in. It's about your own journey and where, where you want to take it. So, for instance, now in J7, look up all our trainers that were there. Every single one of us has a different approach to training and what they and what they what their version of health and fitness is and what they like to get from it. So you have Badger, the power lifter. You've seen him. He lifts mad, mad heavy. He, and you, you, you get what I'm saying? But then that's his, that's his approach to training and fitness. I'm more, I'm more athletic. I've come from a sporting background. So a lot of the things that I do, you'll see me doing just crazy shit, crazy stuff that you won't see that I've been trained to do. So a lot of jumping around. I love calisthenics or the body weight movements. Do you know what I mean? That type of stuff fascinates me how people can control the body weight and move it in in all these type of positions without the use of any type of weight. And then when I try and teach this onto my clients, they say to me, how am I going to be able to do that? But that's only because they're now reminded, they straight away think because of their capabilities, they've ruled out, oh no, I can't do that. But then when I change their mentality to think how I, how I think, the possibilities then is they look at everything as, do you know what? I'm going to give that a try. Anything that I put in front of my clients, I know that their first their first mentality and their outlook on it is going to be, I'm going to give that a go and I'm going to try and smash it. It's never, oh, I can't do that or no, I'm not going to be able to do that. But that's because I've tra- changed their mentality from the get-go. Uh, I know I can't do that thing that you do with them two little handlebar things where you start sweep, do like a press-up and then you're like, <laughs> yeah, doing, Sing, yeah. I can get my fat ass through them. Well, sure, it's all about progress and how people measure their own progress is um it's it's down to you as a person, as an individual, to be honest, isn't it? Because people cut progress in different ways and different stages and different and at different paces, really. So something like that is not to say that you can't, you might not be able to do it now, but give it one, two, three months. What's to say that you couldn't do it then with the right coaching and the right mindset and the right and the right build-up? Anything anything is possible because I remember when I first started that type of stuff. 
I looked at it as if, wow, I'm never going to be able to do that. But then I then changed my mindset and then built a working path towards it. And now a lot of the stuff that I couldn't do before, I'm now capable of doing. But there was a point where it was new to me. It was, but if you have that mindset as, no, I'm never going to be able to do that, then you, you can't expect to get anywhere with it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, well, like you say working, like you see the progress in your own, it's like everyone's progress is different and everyone sees it differently. Yeah. I've noticed that with myself, with because uh, I've known Jay for about 10 years, but I've never worked this closely with him for this length of time. Like we've been doing these one-to-one sessions for ages now. I yeah. Do classes with him and I do the occasional one-to-one. But now he's just throwing like more and more weight at us. When I sit at home, I think I don't. And I thought for years I was trying to lose weight, but not like I'm being a certain weight. And I think maybe a certain weight isn't where I'm supposed to be going because if I get too thin, I'm never going to be that thin because of the, of the size of my body, my actual body. Yeah, the body structure you have to take into consideration that as well. So yeah, so and. And, and that's the most demotivational thing that can ever happen is when you're training and you get to a point where you think, I'm not seeing any changes no more. I've lost weight, but now everything seems to be at a standstill. That is so demotivating because then straight away you start to think, wow, all that work I've been putting in is not been paying off. And then you start losing motivation and you don't want to train and then you start falling off little by little. But then that's where a, a strong mindset comes into play because people always want the quick fix. They want to get from being fat to super skinny. They want to get from having no definition to being super toned. It doesn't happen overnight. It's it literally, it's the fitness becomes a way, it's a lifestyle. What we do, it becomes a lifestyle. I've never seen it like that, but then it generally does becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a routine, something that you work into your way of life, your way of living. Training isn't just something that you just pick up and you think, oh yeah, I'm just going to do it when I can be bothered. Training is something that you should do religiously throughout the week okay I'm not saying every day of the week but it should be part of your weekly routine at some point you should think and and that's i think health and fitness it's about you as a person people measure wealth and um and um wealth by and health by financial state um financial statuses by um, where they live by what cars they drive by the clothes they wear by how they look and what really i see that i see health as you as a person i i are you kids are you gonna are you gonna be there long enough to see your kids grow up these are the things that you need to be thinking about so when I look at my life and I see myself, I, I see myself, I, I, I see myself as a wealthy person because I, I've got a good paid job. I'm healthy enough that where I can do a lot of things with my kids. I can go out. I know I'm going to be here for a longer period of time to be around to watch my kids grow up. But then all of these things come to down to how you treat yourself. What are you, what are you doing to make yourself better? Are you just sat down all day on the couch doing nothing? Yeah. You can't, you can't expect to better yourself when you're, when you can't even do the bare minimum like just get up and going out for a walk or staying active, making sure you're not filling yourself with shit all day long, just sat on the couch eating, eating crap. You can't expect any aspect of your life to change. Health and fitness teaches you so many different things. It disciplines you. Okay. It teaches you commitment. It teaches you how to be punctual and all of these things. And there's a, and there's a hell of a lot more on all of these things. You can tailor it into everyday living into your work life, your home life, your social life. These are all things that build us as pers- as as people, making sure you're on time for your job, on time for work. When you wake up in the morning and if you train, it sets you it sets your day up for the right way running. I know it's the hardest thing to do waking up in the morning to, to train. It's difficult. I know it's hard, but then once it's done, you get that sense of achievement that your day is now set up. You're ready to go. You're ready to go to work. You're going to smash your day at work and everything else falls into place. I've had it done to me. I woke up on some days where I feel shit. I feel just not full of energy. I've done a training session. And as soon as that session's finished, I feel like now, right, okay, the rest of my day's set up now. I feel a lot better. I've, I felt like I've, I've achieved something before the day's even started. I'm ready for work now. I've got that mindset where I know, right, okay, I can I can achieve now. I can do anything that I've set out today. I know I can do it because I started the day off the right way by making sure I'm looking after me. I've, yourself as a priority, as a person, should always be key. Yeah, 
You should always put yourself first as a person, not and not meaning selfish ways that I'll only do for yourself, but meaning look after yourself. You only have one body, okay? Which means you only have one life. How you treat it now depends on what's going to happen in 20, 30 years' time. So when we have kids, it's good that it's important that we teach them from young about health and fitness. And that doesn't mean that they have to be a fucking a power lifter or the strongest person in the gym or anything like that. It just means that we got to teach them that looking after themselves and looking after their body is important, which is which which to me is rule number one. Really. Yeah. So how do you adjust? Because how do you adjust your training for when you have like say Sean or, or the other shining stars kids? Because I see you and I always say I am glad he's got my PT. <laughs> because it's like you've taken it one step up from Trevino's nastiness. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. and I get what you mean, Sue. So people, so now I've had a lot of people say to me, "Wow, you're brutal. You're a hard trainer. You're this. You're that." Anyone can be a hard trainer. Anyone can give someone a hard session. It's not hard. I could go on YouTube, search up a couple of videos, and put together a session that I don't know, I don't have a clue about, but looks good and looks difficult. Anyone can do that. But it's about matching. It's about matching it to the right person. So understanding you. So if you was my client. I always call my first session the sink or swim session. Reason being, I find out what you're all about. So within that one session, I'll throw, throw, I'll throw everything at you. I'll find out, okay, what's his athletic capabilities like? What's his fitness like? What's his strength like? What's, I'll throw everything at you so I can work you out as a person straight away. And then from the get-go, I then know that, okay, Stu, he's not the most athletic person, so I'm not going to be making you do loads of stuff jumping about because I know that that's not your forte. If I say that, right, okay, Stu's strong. He's quite fit as well. I'm going to I'm gonna expose them to because I know that that's what you're strong at. That. I'm going to get the best out of them too. And then I'll worry about the rest later. The other stuff we can build on later on. But what I try and do, I try and work out your strengths first. So then sink or swim sessions is what I use. So when I first met Sean, I had to work him out. as a, I've never trained him before, so I had to work him out. So when I first started training him, I was giving him bits and bobs, but from them little exercises and little sessions I was doing, I was working out what's this game a bit like. I see Sean now, and I know that he's not got a long um, attention span, so he, he switches off very quick. So with Sean, it's about giving him something short and snappy that he can commit to, and then give him a short break, and then back into it, and then that way he can catch on onto it. If I was to give Sean, like you say, and set him up with a five P circuit, after round one, he's not there anymore because it's he's not. He's not got that understanding of that type of training yet. Okay, he needs that one-to-one -one where he's with somebody. So setting him up and leaving him on his own isn't going to work. So with me and my clients and building a successful clientele base has always come down to working them out from that from that very first session before we've even set into place any goals or where we're going to work towards. I need to first work out who you are as a person. Are you ready to commit yourself to me? Okay, because it isn't going to be easier. In my 30-minute sessions, I can put you through hell and back. That's why I don't do one-hour sessions because it won't be enjoyable. Within 30 minutes, you can work to an intensity where you feel, wow, I feel dead, but you feel a sense of accomplishment because you've been worked hard. Yeah. So with you, Stu, it's a matter of you need to understand yourself. So I've trained a lot of people yeah, where they've come to me and they said, Kino, I'm ready to start training. They've trained with me, they've done the session and they disappeared. That's because they didn't, before they came to me and, and, and approached me about sessions, they didn't ask themselves, are they ready to commit themselves? So until you're ready to commit yourself to training, you will find any and every excuse to not get to where you want to be. And I've seen it happen firsthand. And yeah, only, and exactly, and, and, only, and like you said now, only now recently when you've been training with Jay, is the most you've ever committed yourself. And I feel like you've fully committed yourself to him now. I've been seeing you training a lot more now than I used to. Well, that's probably because now you've probably thought to yourself, like, I'm at that stage now where I want to, I, I'm in this for the long run. It's not just on, on and off. I'm, I'm in this religiously now. So fitness for you is a part of your, your lifestyle now. You've committed yourself fully to this and you understand that it's not going to happen in a week, in a month, in two months. It could take a year, it could take two years, but it will happen. You have to trust the process. Yeah, I used to train, so I didn't train at all until I was about 30. I was like a big fat fucker. And, <laughs> and I was, I got out of breath uh, going upstairs. I was finding it hard to chase Sean around the park. And 
shit like that. So I wanted to lose weight and I met Jay. I've told this story about a hundred times, so I won't bore everyone with it. Yeah. So, uh, I have then started running and everything, and then I would train for a race. But then, so I, within the first year, I ran a marathon. Okay. So, uh, so I trained for that marathon. And then the April comes and you run the marathon, and I'm like, well, I've got nothing else this year. And so I just run little 10Ks here and there. Yeah. So I always need needed a finish line. Ah, okay. So, so you have like a plan, but now I'm more like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing this because it makes me feel better. And that, and that should always be the end product. I've, my, my sense of satisfaction from PTA doesn't even come from the financial sides of it. It comes from knowing that I've changed someone's outlook on fitness. Every person I've trained has now fell in love with fitness. They've, they've seen a side to fitness that they've not experienced before. So now they love it that much that they need it. And I've, and this pandemic has really shown that now how much health and fitness, how important it is for people's mental well-being and, and not even just the health. So the amount of, the amount of clients that have messaged me just, just for the social aspect of being around other people. So I've got my boot camp and stuff from that, stuff like that, where, and I look, People attend my boot camp for all different reasons. People attend it because they only do want to build a fitness. Some people attend it because they just love the atmosphere from it because they love socially being around other people. And the fact that I can provide that type of setting for someone, I don't care if if you turned up and you wasn't working at 100%, but I, I felt like this session was doing you a lot of good for your mental health. I couldn't care less what type of work you was doing in the session because I know how beneficial it is for, ev- for, for everyone because I know that fitness is not just about your physical capabilities. It literally is your, it's your mental health and that's what gets neglected the most. People always assume and always associate health and fitness with just the physical aspects of it and it's not always that. The, men- the mental side of things and the way people think, to me, is the main key. If you can unlock the way someone thinks, everything else just seems to fall into place. I, I can't even explain how it does, but but that's what I have learned. So through all my clients, all I try and do is I try and make them understand what health and fitness is actually about. It's not just, oh, you have to look a type of way. You have to be able to do certain types of things. You just have to learn to enjoy it. And as long as you enjoy it, You'll always, you'll always continue to achieve. You'll always achieve your goals and whatever you set out to do. Yeah, that's definitely true. But so before, when you were saying, uh, like on your first session, and it's you do this, this, and it's more than just training someone. You've all, all three of you have said that, have said that, but then gone a different way about it. Like you would say, it, I have to figure out who they are, so I batter them, and then Padu's like. I, I sit with them and speak to them. And Louis was like, I just I have to just get to know them a bit. That's something that comes from like Jay. Yeah. So Jay, Jay had a map, uh, Jay had like, it was like a map. Yeah, he, he already had it set out. So before Jay seven opened, he already had this map set out. And he basically just he taught us everything that he's learned over 15 years within the space of a year. So this is straight away put us ahead because he's crammed all that information in into just the space of a year. That's why me, Badger, and Louis are so elite as trainers. And literally, he said from day one, when you get clients, the first thing you do is you build a relationship with them. Okay, You find out, you, you know the name, you know where they work, you know the family life, you know the work life, you, you, know, you, you know pretty much everything about them. And then that's when the crossover happens. Then you then become a trainer and you become their best friend also because you know everything about them now. So they know that even on their worst days, they can come to you and they can say to you, do you know what, Kino? I'm feeling shit today. I'm feeling like this. And you can cater your sessions then to suit them. But then, for instance, now in other gyms, pure gyms and stuff like that, the trainers, they don't have any type of relationships with their clients because all they think about is the money, okay? All they worry about is getting paid. Unless they're getting paid, they don't bother with you. They don't speak to you unless you're putting money in their pocket. Okay, so therefore their clients, their clients won't be continuous clients. They won't keep coming back after they finish with whatever they're doing. They'll probably go to somebody else or go to another gym or just stop completely. 
because we've built solid, solid relationships with all of our clients. It doesn't matter if I've trained someone consistently for a year and then they decide to stop. If they ever decide to start training again, I know 100% that they will come back to me because we've built, we've solidified, we've solidified a relationship and a bond that they know that, wow, Kino is, is not just a, my trainer, he's there to advise me um, health-wise, family-wise, social-wise, any aspect away from training. And once you can build that type of relationship where it's not just, okay, he's only there for me when it, when it comes to training, people will invest in you a lot more when, when your main focus is not all. Because what, what it is that Jay taught us is that we've got to offer a lot more than what, what, people, what people give us. So now, for instance, with me, all my clients, they know that no, any time of the day, they can drop me a message. They can, and regardless if it's PT related or not, they can message me with any problems and they know that I will try and help them, help them to the best of my abilities, regardless of whether it's, whether they struggle financially, whether they struggle with problems at home, mental, mental health illnesses, anything like that, they know that they can come to me for anything. And because we've got that relationship now, it's like having a long, a lifelong friend that you've grown up with all your life. No matter what, that relationship and that bond, you couldn't see that person for a week, but you know that when you meet again or when you see that person again, it's going to be like, it's going to be like they've never been anywhere. And that's the same thing we treat our clients just as if they are friends. They're not just, uh, just someone that brings us an income. They're not just somebody that just attends our gym. They're not just a member. They become part of the family now. And that's why J7, we call it the J7 family because we don't just see everyone that comes through our doors as clients or members. You're now our friends. You're now our brothers, our sisters. Do you know what I mean? We have aunties, we have uncles. Even though we're not blood, that's exactly how we picture everyone. And when you can create an atmosphere and an environment where everyone feels accepted. That's the biggest thing, I think, with, the, with, with J7 and you guys, is that everybody does feel accepted. Like before, you were saying some people uh, find it daunting to go to a normal, like an, I'll say a normal gym, like average gym, yeah. You change gyms and all that. I still feel like that. now, if I don't know in my head what I'm doing when I'm going in that gym, I will stand around looking like a nervous 11 year old on his first day at high school. <laughs> yeah. Every, without fail. And how, what advice can you give people to stop them feeling like that? So, I understand how daunting it is to walk into other gyms because I used to think like that as well. And when, and it's not even like you've you've got an ego or anything like that. But when you walk into certain gyms and then you see a bunch of big men, all stocky guys, and lifting weights, automatically you're going to think, "Put the hell, I can't." You don't you don't want to sort of because you don't feel like you fit in automatically you're going to then zone out and you're going to try and move away from so when you restrict yourself in the place so the worst thing you can do is compare yourself okay i don't compare myself to anybody else okay i know i'm comfortable and i'm happy with who i am as a person so when you walk into a gym and you see someone looking a type of way or lifting a certain type of way you have to understand what path you're taking when you're walking into a big gym, a corporate gym like Pure Gym or a DW gym, the atmosphere straight away is set by the people that are in there, down to the staff, down to the type of members that go in there. So then you have to, you have to, you have to sort of, I, I say you have to put yourself into a zone. So whenever I train away from J7, I type of, I, I sort of put myself, music for me is one of the things, okay? You've got to type of zone yourself out because you know when you go in there, you're going to see men looking at type of way. women for instance girls going to the gym with a full face of makeup they, it's like a fashion show they're going there because they want to show that they look good they're not actually going in there to work you have to understand a gym is a place to work you're not going in there to show off your body to show oh look look how i look look it's not it's not a beauty pageant you're going in there to work so when you walk in you can't you can't show a way start analyzing everyone in the room and then making a self-analysis on yourself and thinking i should be looking like that because you're on your own path. You have your own image in your head on what you should on what you should look like. So why compare yourself to everybody else? J7, you see that yourself. Nobody comp we have a class of 30, 40 people, and every single person have a different body shape, different skin color, but you won't see any person 
watching the person next to him thinking, oh, well, I wish I looked like everyone in that class is they're working that hard and they're that focused that they're only focused on what they want not what they want to achieve and that's the same outlook that you've got to take into when you go into another gym when you walk in through them doors it's what path where am i taking my training what do i want to achieve you can't straight away automatically walk in and look at somebody else and think oh and then and then um try and compare it to your own type of training because they're on a completely different path to you and them type of gyms are the worst for it because they only portray certain types of things. They don't portray the family type fitness that we portray. They only, for them to sell them, for them to keep going, they've got to show a specific type of person. If you're a female, you have to look this type of way. If you're a male, you have to look this type of way. If you look at any fitness um, branding or stuff like that, it's always... A, a, a female that's in very good shape, probably a big bum, face full of makeup. Everyone seems to think that if you're, if you have to look like that, if you're a male, you have to have a six pack, you have to have big arms and big shoulders and big legs. No. Outlook on fitness is what you want it to be. Whatever you feel like where you want to be at in your, in your journey, that's, that's where you should take it. Regardless of who's in the room, James always said to me, the hard, the hard, can, the hardest worker is someone that can still put in work even in an empty room. So that means even though all eyes isn't on you, can you still put in the same amount of effort as if you was on stage and you had a thousand people watching you? So that's what I, and I've seen Jay do that. Jay would be in the gym in the freezing cold, grafting, putting in work. Um, as if he had an audience watching him of a, of a thousand people, but that just goes down to his mentality and his mindset. He knows that he's on his own journey and his own path, and it doesn't matter what the person next to him is doing, as long as he knows that he's on the right path and he's headed towards where his goal is. Yeah, it must be a nightmare for women, though. Uh, so, like, I should be able to just be like, it's all right, this guy's looking yeah. at me. And what did Jay say to me one time? He said, Nobody gives a fuck, Stuart. Nobody's looking at you. Right, I was like, well, what do you mean? He said, because you're not that important to anybody else in the gym. Nobody's actually looking at you. It's just the way you think. And mm. Tori always, like, she won't mind me saying it. She gets a bit like, oh, I don't look like that. And I don't want to train in this section because they're over there. And I always try and say to her, they're not looking at us. I said, they're not, and if they are looking at us, they, they're going to see something that they're not fucking doing. Because I say it all the time, like, we're the only people that are in there at tea time sweating. So we'll go into that little studio uh, area and then we won't just lay on a ball or lay on a mat. We'll be in there. We'll be putting, work putting in graft. you be working. 35 minutes later, after throwing some weights about and slamming some balls down, and we have to get <laughs> out. Our numbers in to get out. And that's the thing, shoot. And Jay's completely right with that. If anybody is watching you in the gym and watching what you're doing, they're clearly not focusing on what they should be doing or what they've or what they've come to do with their training. So that's the way you gotta look at it. If somebody stood there looking at what you're doing, you're clearly putting in more work than them. Yeah. So there's nothing for you to be thinking, oh, I'm, am I doing something wrong? That means that you're grafting that hard that you've then took their focus away from what they should be doing because they know themselves that they should be working that hard. Yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't it doesn't bother me as much anymore. It's just the whole not having a plan when I go in, it makes me a bit like, oh, because I have to think on the fly and I'm no good at it. So I like to have I like but to then, know, I'm work it out before I get there. But then shoot, so now you have to look at this. So I don't know what your what like what your outlook is on when so when when you think about oh I need the P so when people think oh and I, I want a trainer or I want a PT, they think that we're the magic, we're the magic ingredient. As some people would say, we're not a magic ingredient, okay? We're just the motivation and the push that some people need, okay? So understand that a lot of the things that we teach and we coach, all of our clients are capable of doing that themselves. And that's what I say to them. I say to them that I'm not a long-term thing. I'm only supposed to be there to change your mindset and give you the knowledge you need and to probably get you to a certain goal or a certain level to where you can then think, do you know what? I'm comfortable enough now. I've gained enough experience. I've gained enough knowledge that you can then take that away for yourself. And you should be able to think, right, do you know what? I've been training with Kino for a year now. 
I've learned so much from him. I know all these different methods, these types of exercises, these routines, and you should have took away enough information from them sessions to then think, do you know what? I'm capable of training myself now. And that's what I always say to my clients. It's more than anyone can just give someone an exercise. I can say to you, Stu, give me a squat jump, okay? I don't just do that. I try and coach and teach my clients at the same time. So I try and explain to them why we're doing things, the reason behind it, and why it's beneficial. So therefore, if it was to ever get to a point where they couldn't afford paying for PT sessions anymore, or they have to put their sessions on hold for any reason, at least I know that I've gave them enough information that they can then take that away and train themselves effectively without me having to be there. So maybe that's something that you have to start doing with your sessions now. Maybe you have to start trying to think, well, okay, I might need to start taking away a little bit more from these sessions now. So rather than you just listening to what Jay's saying and him just being a teacher and saying, right, Sue, do this, probably try asking him a bit more, say to him, Jay, why do we do these things? What's the best type of training for me? Do you know what I mean? Because my clients fight, my clients shoot questions at me all the time. Can you know on my days off? What can I be doing for this? What can I be doing for this? And I say, and, and, and I'll give him a lot of things to do or, do you know what I mean? So maybe you need to start saying to Jay, right, look, I want to start taking a bit more, more away from these sessions. Now, rather than it just you just being a teacher and just saying, do this, this, and this, I want a bit more to take away from myself now. So in the long run, I can go to another gym. So on your days where you're not with Jay, because at the minute you probably won't even, you probably won't be training or where you're not with Jay, you can say about, okay, I'm going to do a home workout today. And you've got a library of exercises that you can do or, you know, with minimal equipment, body weight, because you don't always need weight. People seem to think that to train, you need weight. You don't. No. Your body weight is enough. Okay. I can kill someone with no equipment, no equipment needed with just your body weight. Okay. I've had, I've, James made me do it. But then understanding. So now, so you have to understand that in these sessions, there's so many things that you can take away from it, okay? Down to the warm-ups, the cool-down, the stretches, and that's everything you need to keep yourself going. You don't need somebody by your side. All so people seem to think that doing one, two PT sessions a week is going to get them to the weight they want to get to or get them a flat stomach or get them big arms. It's not... And doing one, two PT sessions a week is not the key ingredient. No. The key ingredient I say to my clients is what they do away from me. Yes, I help them during the week, one, two, three times a week. But what gets them their results is what they do on their rest days, those days in between, and what they do away from me. So whether they're, they're going out for runs or jogs or whether they're doing all home workouts, that extra work is what's really getting them with the results. Those are half an hour or 45 minute sessions with me. It's good and it's motivational and it's a good drive and it's a good push, but it's not enough. If they were to only do them two sessions a week, they wouldn't get the results that they were to get. Fact. Yeah, no, I like going and having the PT. I mean, I must like it because I think I say it was out. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I like having, I like, I like to know that I, I go to the gym, I can go to the gym and I know I can cobble, I know I can kind of work out and do it when I get there and that's yeah. what I get before I can't just turn up even though I just look lost but I know what I'm going to do I'm, I'm all right if I go in there knowing what I'm going to do I'm all right but I like that bit when I'm going see Jay or you know yourself or whatever it is and then I get that extra push and I know it's that extra push where I'd get an extra three or four reps out of something because there's somebody that's not going to let me quit it's like when I go track and I've got a running coach I know that when I'm at that track, he is going to get that extra eight or twelve hundred meters out of me at, at, a, at a full at a full speed. Rather than when I, if I was on my own running around the street, I'd be like, "Oh, my legs are a bit tired. I'm going to have a walk for a minute." Okay, so from hearing you say that, you already you you can already identify your downfalls and where you're lacking, and that a lot of what you're saying comes down to your mentality and where you're thinking. So now, no one's no one's saying that. It's not good to have a training partner or to have somebody there to push you or to motivate you. But sometimes you have to be your own motivation because there is going to get to a point where 
possibly, I don't know, where you're going to have to start training your own a bit more, but are you just not going to train on your own because you can't motivate yourself? Maybe that's a mentality now that you have to start trying to pick up on your own, start and learn, probably start trying to do a bit more in like individual sessions on your own away from Jay, just to get used to that mentality of thinking and trying to push yourself a little bit more. Because if you don't get to the point, so and that's and Jay and Jay's always said that to us because we I used to come in and I used to always feel like I needed someone to train with. So I used to always like be with Tabadja, like, oh. Do you fancy training today or to, to this person, do you want to train today at this time? But then Jay's, and then if that person was to train me that day, I probably wouldn't train because I had nobody to train with. But then it got to a point where Jay said to me, are you, are you just not going to train because you got no one to train with? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, no, you still need to train regardless if you if your partner's not here because they're not then not your motivation. It's good having that push, that extra push is nice to get those extra two or three reps. But what's really motivational is having that motivation to get up in the morning to actually do the session, to actually follow through and finish the session. That's the motivation you need. So the motivation to get the extra couple of reps, that will come within time. The more you train, the harder you're going to graft anyway. So the motivation you need is the motivation to say to yourself, do you know what, shoot, I'm capable of training myself. I think that's something that you need to probably try yourself. Probably say to yourself, do you know what? Once a week, I'm going to try and put myself through my own session and just try and kill yourself just the same way Jane would kill you. Because you, you, you know you've got the knowledge through. You've got everything. You know how to do it. You just got to put it into action. But you have to take that first step first. True that, true that. Like, when I... Training for races and stuff like that, I do train on my own. I have mates that come yeah. out with me, but I know if they're not there, I have to do it or I'm not getting to the end of the race. Not getting to the end, exactly. But when I have that extra, but it's just like now, I just, not now, but just in general, just yeah. in between races and stuff like that, I'm a bit like, I better just go and do it. And then I'll just keep myself in my comfort zone in the gym and stuff like yeah. that. But me and Tor, we train together all the time. We're outside of this, we'll go Jays and then we go to the gym. Okay, that's good. We do push each other in the gym, and then which she always laughs because I'm like, <laughs> she says, You're in a class, what have you got your headphones in for? Because I, I can't stand the music here, and I know <laughs> see what he wants me to do. Jay's music is the worst music I've heard that so many times. I've heard it so no, many I like Jay's music, I don't like the music in the north. Oh, the music in the other gym because they just play generic dance music and stuff. Oh, the typical, all right. Yeah. No, no atmosphere, no nothing. We all know them ones. I'd rather just have some angry rap music on in my head or something. Yeah. <laughs> when I go for a run. But she laughs and goes, you're on the treadmill and you're fucking yelling at yourself. I say, I know, because I, I, have, I, I have to yell at myself sometimes so I don't quit. If I'm running a 5K on the treadmill, I yell at I'm like, come on, you could do it. Come on, Fatty, you can do it. And she said, watch that for said, because that's what Jay would tell me or Rick would tell me if I was about to quit. Yeah, of course, 100%. So I yell at myself like I'm a psychopath in the gym. <laughs> and she just sits behind me on a road machine going, I'm not with him. No, I'm not with him. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Sean, what's question three, mate, on uh, number three? What is your big success in story? What's your biggest success story? <laughs> Oh, in regards to what, like with my PT and stuff, or just anything in general, in general? What, in you in within you, like what's your biggest success, or what do you see as successful? Do you know what? What I see as successful is my KH Fitness brand at the minute, and my uh, yeah, basically my my KH Fitness business that I've built up because I remember. I said to myself that when I started PT and I wanted to get to the point where I had a waiting list of people to book in with me, I wanted to develop such reputation that people was like, they was like, wow, I, I want to train with him. And I can honestly say that for the past, say, two and a half, I say about for the past two and a half years, I've seen that change and I've seen the level from where I started to where I am now. So in my first year at J7, and this is what people need to understand, 
why people don't like sticking out and grinding out enough people give up too easily when jay first opened j7 and i started pt and bear in mind when jay first opened j7 i wasn't even a qualified trainer i was just behind the reception my job, literally my job was to just sign people in book them onto classes and literally say hello like and manage the gym literally that was it i didn't train anyone i didn't do a single class i didn't do anything of the sort but that's because i wasn't ready and jay knew i wasn't ready so over the course of a year he was on my ass like he was on my case with everything okay down to punctuality i was late so many times because getting up at four in the morning that was a myth to me that i never ever woke up at four in the morning before that, that gym opened never never seen it so at the start i was late often to the point where he was going to get rid of me but then i had to change my whole mentality way of thinking I thought, you know what? if i want to make it somewhere i can't keep being late do you know what i mean it's, it's not it's not it's not a good representation, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's not, if I'm always late, what, how does that make me look as a trainer? If I'm late for my clients, if I'm late, do you know what I mean? To open the, the business, it's going to it's gonna look bad. So I had to fix up with that. So now I'm never late. I've got a routine now. Now it's part of my routine. Four o'clock to wake up, it's not, that's not a problem anymore. At one point, it was an issue. Now it's not. So that was one of the first obstacles. Second was to then develop a training style, a style of training that was different to Jay's that people didn't think that, oh, he's just trying to be like Jay. So as Jay started coaching me and I started getting used to PT and then training clients, I then picked up on Jay started. Um, so now when we the members started coming in and I was comfortable training people, I was training clients and I was giving away sessions for free. So every time somebody would come through the door, I'd be like, are you okay? What are you, what, what are you training today? Do you mind me putting you through a little 15, 15, 20 minute session? They'd be like, oh yeah, cool, cool, no worries. I let them warm up and I put them through a lot of session and then people was loving it. It was enjoying it. And then one client turned into two and two turned into three. But at this point, I wasn't charging anyone as well. So all of these sessions was free. So for a whole year, I was training pretty much all of the J7 members, just putting everyone through sessions, setting them up all for free. And then I started doing classes. I was doing the classes, getting comfortable being in front of um, a class of 30, 40 people. And then that started getting comfortable. And then Jay was testing me. And the thing with Jay was nothing's ever perfect with Jay. There's always something wrong, which is good because it always gives you something to work on. Nothing can ever be perfect. Okay. And I was perfect. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah. So nothing, nothing, nothing can ever be perfect because then you would never have room for improvement. So when I was doing classes, after every class, he would analyze me and he would tell me where I went wrong. So each week I had something to work on and it got to the point, Stu, where I was like, for my God's sake, why is it every week I've got something? One week it'll be this, I'll fix that, next week it'll be something else. And then I'll fix that problem, next week I'll find something else. I think it's never ending now. But what I didn't realise that every time he was finding something else for me to work on, it was making me become a better trainer each and every time. Every time I, he found another area of improvement, I just became better and better and better and better trainer and deliverer and class deliverer. Everything just started falling in place. I didn't see the bigger picture. So after a year, when I'd been doing classes and giving away sessions for free and training people for free, those sessions then started transcending into people now coming to me. So rather than me going to them and saying to them, do you mind me training you? People was coming to me saying to me, do you know how much you charge for sessions? Yeah. And then... It's turned into one paying client, then to two paying clients, three paying clients, four. And then now, two and a half years on, Stu, I've comfortably got, I've got over 60 clients that I've gained and built up over years. But it's not, it's not, it wasn't just plain sailing at the start. So a lot of people that gave up. So when people become PTs, they seem to think, that, oh yeah, I become a trainer. I start training clients and then that's just, that's just it. It's just, all you got to do is just tell people what to do. No. It's not as easy as that. The, the hardest thing, the hardest thing is to even get clients. To even get a client and to even justify, because you, you have to justify to somebody why they're willing to pay you money to train them. No one's actually not just going to part with 200, 300 pounds for nothing. You've got to give them a fucking good enough reason why they're going to pay you that money. So therefore, that's when the relationship building comes into play. That's why we build a strong relationship with these people because we have to show them why, the reason why, what, what, what is that money going towards? Because it's not just their training. 
it's their social well-being, it's everything that comes with it. We give them so much more than just a training session. That's what they pay us for, for that lifelong friendship, for that, that 24-7, 24/7 contact they did, that they know that they can turn to you at any time. Yeah, I get that. And Sean, are you listening to that? Because it's yeah. not easy, like, because you say you want to work in the, like, sport. It, it's, like, going to be difficult, but you have to work hard, and that's why we make you stick at rugby if you, not just at rugby, but if you, because you start the season, I always say at the start of every season, you start the season, you finish the season, and if yeah. you don't do it, then find something else for those three hours a week. That's another exercising thing. No, 100%, 100% is true. Like, literally, it, it's, it's as, it all comes from a mindset. And that's what I said to you from the start. Like, fitness to me is a mindset. It's, it's nothing about physicality. It's like, it's all a mindset. And that, that mindset is, can be seen through so many different things. Like, you, your whole development, if I didn't change my mentality from the start when I first started working with Jay, I don't think that I could have been such a successful PT as I am today. Honestly, I don't think I don't think that because a lot of people probably would have just thought, Do you know what? They would have thrown in the towel. With the amount of grief and stick that I was getting from Jay at the time when I was up and coming and I was learning to be a PT, a lot of people I know for a fact would have thought, Do you know what? I'm not doing this. It's not worth the, it's not worth the headache, it's not worth the hassle. But because I, I always seen the, but because I always seen the bigger picture at the end, I had to grind it out. I had to stick it out just to see. Do you know what? Let me see if I can actually make something of this. Let's see where I can actually take this because I know the opportunities are there and the possibilities are there. But it all comes down to me as a person and what what I can deliver and what I can bring. And four years on, Stu, look where I am. Four years on, and I'm here. And do you know what I mean? I'm grinding. I'm building. Yeah, killing it. I remember I laughed when you were saying about you used to work behind the reception desk. I forgot about that. And then I was, <laughs> I did like getting up. I used to remember Jake's videos of you sat in the car like this. So yeah, freezing cold. Yeah. Jay pure hype next year. And another day so it'd be a video and it'd be Jay and be sat outside your house and be like, this little dickhead. Dickhead, yeah. Out of yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you soon it's bad, but now it's like but I'm glad because all of these little things now has, has, has tailored and it's changed my whole life as well as a trainer. So these early mornings now to me has made my running day a lot easier. So now because I'm an early bird now, at one point I wasn't, but because I'm an early bird now, I get up and I get shit cracking straight away. So when I'm up in the morning, things are done in the house before, do you know what I mean? I'm already started, but it makes my whole working day run a lot better. And I'm one of them me where... How I work, I work militant as as per se. I don't like switching on and off. Once my switch is turned on, I like to stay on until the job's done. So with my PT in and the way I work through my clients, I could work through 10, 15 sessions back to back without a break in between. I prefer that because I can stay in a mindset throughout all of them sessions and know I can deliver every single session to a level of standards where I know that everyone's going to get treated the same. If I've got to switch on and off in between, it doesn't work well for me. So I can't do, say, do a few PTs, have a little break, do a few more, have a little break. I can only work from start to finish. So when I work, I, I go all in. It's all oh, no, or nothing with me. I either work and I finish it until and I, and I stick it out until it's done, or I, I find another alternative. It's not a stop, a start and stop type of thing with me. I have to go all in. So it's with with me now with my PT in. It literally is all in. I, I even now for a lockdown, I've been sat down and I've been working on new ways, like developing my boot camp, which is coming back. From the 12th of April, I've got like five or five, um, five online programs that I've developed during lockdown. I've got um, a fitness app that I'm in the middle of creating. Do you know what I mean? I've got a website that's due. So the work never, ever stops. So I try and keep my busy, myself busy regardless. So even if I'm not training anyone, it doesn't mean that my business just stops there because I'm not trained. My business is more than just the training side of things. I'm I'm trying to build something where, like I said before, I want to be available from, it doesn't matter where I am. KH Fitness should be available to anyone, anywhere, all over the world. It doesn't matter where you are, what situation. I, I want to be able to cater for every type of person, okay? So for instance, now after lockdown and when things go back to normal, 
because I come from a sporting background, I want to reintroduce a lot of sports and coaching things back into my training and stuff that I do now. So as well as the weight training side of things, which is good, I see there's not a lot of things for kids nowadays and the, the youth is where, and obviously they're the future. And Lou, I was listening to Louis' podcast the other day as well. And Louis said that he likes training younger kids because yeah. they because it's pretty much sets them up for their life ahead of them, really, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he said, so, uh, that's what he was saying, like which, young life especially because he knew because he knows now that he needed that when he was younger, but he didn't realise it at the time. It's like Sean doesn't realise that when I'm saying, come on, we've got to go and exercise, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. Like, it's for his own good. It isn't. Because I don't want him to get to 30, be 19 stone, and be out of breath getting up the stairs. Be out of breath and get out of breath. And that's, and that's definitely true. And th- when he said that, it made complete sense because our children, regardless if it's a boy or a girl, is the future. So I've got a daughter of my own and a stepson of my own, okay? So now with them two, Fitness is normal for them now. So at the minute, I'm training my missus from home. The kids get involved in them training sessions as well. So, and once uh, my, son, my son's five and my daughter's what just turned two, they, they've they already been introduced to fitness now. So they already know and they see it. Nothing. I'm not saying that I'm going to drag them into the gym and make them start training five times a week, but at least they know that they should be kept act- active. So even points during the day, we take them out for walks. We, we go... Act, they, 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 things like this need to be drawn in from a young age, okay? Because that's that's where the that's where the stepping stone starts. That's where kids like and the age of sixteen. That's when you start trying to figure out your life as a person, as a teenager. You start trying to figure out what path you want to take during life. Where do you want to take yourself? What what do you want to be when you're older? You start thinking about all these different things and where you see yourself. Fitness. Again, sets you up. It teaches you all of those factors that I was saying before about how to be responsible, how to be um, dedicated, how to be punctual. Because all of them aspects is what's going to lead on when they go in for job interviews, when they go to uni or college. Do you know what I mean? It brings out confidence in people. I've trained a young lad for the past year, and when he came to me, he was the most timid boy I've ever seen to the point where I would greet him and he couldn't look at me in my face. He would look at the floor when he when he spoke to me. Through training, when he walks through the doors now, it's like you 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 know when somebody when somebody has a sense of confidence about themselves. You know when somebody's a bit reserved and held back and you know when someone's fully confident because you can see it in the way they walk, the way they hold themselves, the way they present themselves. When this boy walks in now, Stu, right, he firmly grips my hand and he'll look at me and he'll look at me in my face and he'll make eye contact. And that, to me, now I can see that changing him from him being that timid boy that couldn't even look at me face to face to a young man now that walks in, is vocal, who shakes my hand and looks at me. I can see that confidence now shining through him. And his mum said that she's seen a change with him in, in school in, and in other aspects, in the way his attitude is at home. But then he wasn't like this at the start, but that's through his whole experience through health and fitness. And he's not he's not on any specific path. He's only a 13, 14 year old. So we, I'm not getting, I'm not, he's not, I'm not doing anything major with him apart from some boxing, some weights here and there. But through the disciplines that he's learned through training, it's now helped him in every, every other aspect in his life where his home life now and his relationship with his mum's a lot better. His his whole relationship with school and his schoolwork and how he is in his attendance in school has become a lot better. He's um he was at one point he was getting bullied in school. That's not happening anymore. So all of these things that have been taken away from it, and not one of them things is even was even a physical aspect. None, none of it was with how his appearance was, whether he's gone fitter or stronger. They was all things to do with other aspects in his life that health and fitness has impacted. Yeah, and that's why it's so important. Yeah, just ask Jay what I when I first met Jay. What I was like, I mean, I was, I was shy, and I would I used to wear a coat to training because I was fat, and I just I used to just and I was just like just kept myself to myself, and I wasn't like I am now where I just go in and tell Jay's a dickhead and all that. And that's sort of <laughs> and, and you can Jay see that. Jay told the running club 
Uh, I've got this lad coming. I'm going to send him running. He, what, he's trying to get fitter. He's very quiet. And I remember six months after been running, the, the guy who ran it said, Jay told me you were quiet. Are <laughs> <laughs> you quiet? Are you fuck? You're not quiet. That was what I mean, honestly, yeah. No, it's good. And and you've you've seen firsthand of what it can do for people. And literally the, the sense of achievement that you get from it is is how many lives you can change from it. And I've changed so many people's lives through health and fitness that you get such a ma- massive sense of satisfaction from it that it the money side of things and everything else becomes irrelevant just knowing that you're changing people's lives is enough and seeing those people's lives that you've changed and seeing how they're developed and how, and how how they're continuing to go is what's best for me that's what's most rewarding for me that's what i take away from it the most I know that at the end of every session or every client that comes to me that I'm changing and I'm changing their life for the better. Literally, whether it's the smallest of things, I know that I've added something or changed something in that person's life too, which is literally being a PT. That's what's most important about it. That's what I take away from the most. Yeah, that's why you guys are good as well. Uh, but I noticed the change in Sean in and around J7 when we was there and it was a bit unsure but now he's more comfortable around all of us and yeah he does a bit more and he puts a bit of work in but you've got a question about the app haven't you sean Ooh. tell us about the app so <laughs> right the kh fitness app it's currently in progress okay so on the app i'm looking to okay so i've i've i try to study the industry so much because one thing jay said to me for when i started training is you've got to sort of adapt and grow as the industry changes as well. So now due to COVID, a lot of things have gone online based. So there's a lot of like the online Zoom PTs and classes and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of the Zoom, the the the, the sort of virtual, the virtual PT and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, I'm capable, I can do it and I, and I don't mind it. But if it was a choice to do it face to face or over a Zoom PT, I probably wouldn't, okay? But then I thought of a way that I can still cater for my online clients, but without the the Zoom PT. So I thought, why not create an app where I can have programs and workouts on the app, it'll have ready-made workouts, so 15, 20 minute, 30 minute workouts, what people can select from. So it'll have categories. So for instance, if you wanted a ab routine, it'll have, However, X amount of ab routines, workouts with visual aids, so they'll have videos to go with it if you're unsure about the exercises that people can just go to, click on, and it'll have, it will be me, but all the way through. So it won't just be a snippet of the exercises. It'll be a workout routine with me doing it with you. But then, so then you've got the full motivation. So rather than me actually del- delivering a session, it'll be a pre-recorded workout, but of a full session. And I'll be doing a session all the way through. So from start to finish, you'll be hearing my voice, with each exercise, each routine, motivating you all the way through until the workout is completed. So it won't just be you just looking at an exercise and having to do it yourself. So I'm still trying to give that motivation by having the full workout there, me, hear, you hearing my voice, me being there in the video all the way through and you can physically see me should add the aspect a bit more of a, giving you a bit more of a push rather than you just watching the video of an exercise and having to do it yourself. You probably won't probably push yourself as much whereas if you had like a fitness DVD. You'd probably work a bit harder watching a fitness DVD as if you were reading um, an online program just saying, okay, do this exercise, do that exercise. It'll have home workout tips and exercise that people can do from home. I'll have online programs that people can buy. So I'll have fat loss, muscle building. There'll be hip workouts. There'll be... Um... um more like cardio and fitness or for like runners and stuff like that. So cardio, so for people that like, because um, recently what I've noticed that a lot of people have liked, have gone into running throughout lockdown. And since lockdown started and COVID started, a lot of people have taken to running. So I've sort of developed, um, I'll, I'll say a, a more fitness, but um, cardio routine that will be on there for, to purchase. I've got a beauty program that's on there that would you to come out. 
it'll have um, nutritional content on there um, and guidelines that people can follow. So if they need help and tips on what foods to eat and stuff like that, that'll be on there. Uh, and it, it, it will be updated. So with the app, I can update as and when as well. So I can update frequently. So say, for instance, if I've got like a boot camp coming up or if I've got special offers on, I can just add it and change it on there. But yeah, there'll be because it's so fresh and new at the minute, things might change and things might get altered. But yeah, there'll be other, there, there's lots of other key features that I'm going to try and add into there as well. But at the minute, it's a work in progress. And hopefully by about mid, say probably about by June, July, hopefully then it should be finished. That's what I'm hoping for. Right. You're, you're actually super passionate about all this fitness shit and that. Right? Yeah. You need to be more vocal on social media. I, do you know what? One thing with me, Stu, yeah, is I've never been a speaker, like a talker. So me doing this now, at first, I was a bit, bloody hell, I'm going to have to sit on screen and talk and people are going to watch me talking. Like, I've never, Jay's always had a loud voice. He's always been very, very vocal and he's, and he's talking and speaking. With me, I sort of let my work do the talking. So with me, I'm, I know I've been a bit quiet content-wise recently posting over lockdown because I've been spending so much time doing other things. But I sort of let my my workouts and my my content do the talking. So I let people see what I do do the talking for me. So with a lot of the things that I post, that I do things that I do with my clients, my own sessions, my boot camps, and other things that I have going along. That's what that's how I try and promote myself. Jay is very very passionate. He's a talker. He can captivate someone by his talking. You you can sit there and listen to him talk for hours. Because he's got that, he's he's got that about him, and I know that's one thing that I'm not very something that I'm I'm building on, and I'm getting more comfortable with. But yeah, I know what you mean about that with social media. I know, and I'm I'm still studying and learning with, because I wasn't I wasn't very strong with um with understanding how social media works at one point, and it's only over really the past year or so that I've really come to terms with understanding certain things and how to promote and how to structure, and that's. One of the main reasons why I created a whole new page when I created KH Fitness, because I just felt like the way my other page was set up, it wasn't very structured. I was I was studying other pages and other fitness pages and looking at how they branded themselves, how they structured their social media page, on what content they was posting and stuff like that. And mine didn't really have a set path. It was a bit of bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of this and a bit of everything. But now when you go on my KH Fitness profile, because I've got a certain because I've got a certain vision and a certain way I want it to look, I only post specific things on there because I'm trying to follow a certain type of um, certain type of model. So now on there, I don't tend to post my own workouts on there no more. So you don't really see what I'm doing as a trainer of me with, in regards with my own personal training because I want people to see what my clients are doing. Because I'm trying to advertise me as a business, I want to I want to show people what I can do for them. So rather than them, them seeing me all the time and seeing, wow, I can see Kino training, doing this and doing that, which my other page was a lot of, I now tend to post a lot of results, transformation transformation pictures. I tend to post a lot of um, PT sessions, so me coaching, delivering in my sessions, me doing my classes, me delivering my bootcamp classes, so people can see what I have to offer rather than just seeing me as a person, which what I seem to, when I look back at my other page now, I, I kind of get from that page, people just see me as a trainer, just me and what I do. I want them to see what I offer because I, I offer so much, so many things that people don't even know about. So now with K, pardon? Tell them. Tell them. Okay. <laughs> so, Fitness, every day, post a story or two or three stories because that's the only way that Instagram will start recognizing your yeah. profile and it'll get more prominence on and then you'll get more people will get to see it because if you're just posting a post or yeah. like every every few days, it's just a normal post. It just gets lost in the shuffle. Ah, uh, that's see. all. There we go. That's another learning curve for me. Then, so that's so. And this is what I'm grateful for, you because everything is a learning curve. So even now with this app, I'm no graphic designer, and I like don't get me wrong, guy. Like, I'm capable, I can understand things, I can have a lot of play around, but I'm trying to teach myself certain things. So even with this app now, I've got somebody else alongside of me helping me and doing it with me that is an expert at doing it. But I also try and get involved as well and having a little, a little bit of, do you know what I mean? Having to try editing and stuff like that because 
if I can understand how to work these things, like it's some, it's an, it's another useful tool that I can add to this, the things that I can already do. So if I can learn to develop an app good enough in the future, God knows I could start learning to develop numerous different types of apps that I can then offer to do. I mean, and I can offer different types of packages or anything else, but everything. So now social media has become a massive thing to me, understanding it, understanding how it works, because I know that it's such a powerful tool. And, and I do know that and understanding, understanding and understanding how it works could take me places that I can imagine. Do you know what I mean? So over the next course of the year, now that is one of my main focuses. I've got a mood board at home that has all my goals, my ambitions and everything that I want to achieve and things and, and checklists and things that I need to take off. And this year, social media has been one of my main priorities that I need to, I want to sort of try and solidify it and build something quite big on social media, like a big social media platform. So yeah, so in regards with promotion wise and posting, that's something I'm going to take into consideration now and make sure that people do see a lot more of KH Fitness and you know what I mean? I'm not just popping up every now and again because I feel like since I've I've brought that page out, I've not been as vocal on there and as I should have been. So yeah, you will be seeing a lot more of KH Fitness now recently. Yeah. Like I always say, J7, like that's Javino. People don't go, people went to Javino originally because of Javino. It's what I've always told him. It's it's you. It isn't the workouts, it's you. And that's what people need to see from you is yeah. that yeah, I'm Kino and KH Fitness, that's me. I'm KH Fitness. It's nice. And it's not just like uh posting fitness things all the time. Even um, like yeah. having a little chat or something on a story or something, it just keeps you out there. That's oh, it. That's true. No, very, 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 very true. And that's the thing. I like people now, like people are starting to associate me with KH Fitness. So they know so when they see my post, like the whole colour scheme and stuff like that when I was developing the logo and the branding and the color schemes that I wanted to go with, I was, I was really looking, I had to look into depth and what like my target audience, how I want it to look, how I want the whole product to product to be seen. And what you're saying is right. Like people now, not as much as I'd want it to be, but people are now identifying me with cage fitness and they know what cage fitness is and what it stands for and what it means. And cage fitness is, it's, it falls under J7 and it's just, it's similar, but it's just with my own personal twist to it and own personal touch to fitness. That's all it is because the whole idea will never change. So the way me, Jay, Badger, Louis think, we all think the same is just that we all add our individual approaches towards the fitness industry and what fitness actually is. That makes a difference. Like what you were saying, people, when people first started coming to J7, it was all J, 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 J. Yeah. Because people see J7 as J, so they only wanted J. But because J didn't want that, J wants J7 to be something much more bigger than that, he had to develop trainers. I might a little bit and let people see that even though J7 is J, J7 is also Kino, it's also Badger, it's also Lure which also bring a different aspect towards it, which is, I'm glad now that, do you know what I mean, we've, past four years, we've grafted Stu and, do you know what I mean, and the workers, you can you can clearly see that it's paid off, do you know what I mean, so now the foundation has been set, we've grafted and we've grafted and we've grafted and the foundation has been set, now it's just a matter of adding those extra blocks on top now and just continue building because the work speaks for itself, two years in a row, gym of the year, do you know what I mean? All the other stuff that Jay's been doing in the background and, do you know what I mean? We, we've been on the radar now and we're slowly, slowly creeping up, but we've just got to make sure that we keep delivering that, that same level of standard of work. That's the only thing with us. People know what we bring to the table. Nobody questions us because people know. So that's why when people have come from other gyms and come to J7, they think, wow, is this, is this what it's like? like because they expect experience something that they've never seen before and as long as we keep doing that Stu there's no doubt that when nothing can stop us I, there's no doubt that in five years time that we will have a bigger building and we, we will be up there we we are we are one of the names that are creeping up there now in the fitness industry there's no doubt about it there's nobody doing what we do and to the level that we do it out as well and that's a fact because you're all super passionate about it like that's what that's what I've noticed from all of you I mean I already knew Jay properly and but yeah. 
talked all over the last couple of weeks that you're all proper passionate about it and you're all slightly different, but you all have that same passion and that same drive to succeed. Yeah, 100%. You're all proper young as well, so it's proper, it's good to see. And do you know what? It's having, having Jay as a mentor, right? Okay. So for me, it was a little bit more difficult because it's family as well. So I see, I see both sides of Jay. But what people don't understand, the Jay you see in the gym is the same Jay I see away from the gym. So Jay doesn't change as a person. That's always him, regardless of where he is, where he is or who he's around. He is that same type of person. So even when we're away from work, Jay speaks to me the same. He treats me the same. And he sort of drilled into me now. So he's he sort of made us... So bear in mind, at the start, only Jay had his vision. Only Jay seen this big plan of J7. Bear in mind, I didn't even know what J7 was at one point until he told me that he was opening the gym and he wanted me to come work with him and he wanted to train me, to be, train me up to become um, a PT. Same with Louis. Louis just sort of stumbled upon J7. Badger was also obviously all, already a client of Jay's, do you know what I mean, before we became a trainer. But we, we never had the whole idea of J7 being something massive and being such a such a big iconic image in the local community. So now his his way of thinking has now become our way of thinking. Regardless of what we how we see it, we now think how he thinks. And that's because he's drilled everything into us from day one. He's made us see is he's literally dissected it's it's crazy because the amount of information he's taught us is crammed into the space of a year. So everything, so some trainers, when they finish a PT course, they just sort of let loose to just go on the way. During the course, anyone can become a PT student. It's, 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 it's a piece of piss. The course is not even difficult. It's not hard to become a PT. Now, in, in this day and age, everyone's becoming a PT. It's what happens after that. What they, doesn't, what they don't teach you on that course after you become a PT is all those little things in between what Jay did teach us is how to build relationships with clients is how to build a successful business, how to have, how to build an effective um, exercise library where you can give, you can cater for any type of client, whether you train an elderly person, someone with, somebody with disabilities, someone that's pregnant. He's taught us all of these things without having to go on courses and having to pay for this knowledge and take a longer period of time. He's gave us all of this within a space of a year. So that's straight away has given us a, a fucking a head start. So we're ahead of a lot of trainers now that are just coming out of woodwork, that are just qualifying as PTs. We've already got the knowledge that's going to take them another one, two, three years to gain. We've had that in a year. So the fact that we've absorbed all that information now, we've and, and, and we're still learning. So the industry is changing day by day. Year by year, new things are happening, new things are coming out, a new way of training is becoming a thing. So when um, CrossFit became a thing, do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So the industry is always going to adapt and change, but you just got to be ready for that change. And some people aren't. Some people just, they, they, they don't see the end product. They just see, I'm a PT now. All I've got to do is say, right, you do this, you do that. They don't have the first slightest clue as how they're even going to get their first client. How are they going to promote themselves as a PT? Where, where, where do I even start? Like, how do I even like? Because I never knew any of that stuff. But thanks to Jay and his knowledge, and him having this sort of mind map and this outlook and where everything was going to lead to, he's fed us everything and just gave us everything to now lead us to where we are. And even now to this day, like me, Badger, Louie, we all sit down and we all talk. And even though we all train together and we all learn from each other, we still find it crazy how not one single one of us has tried to copy or follow in, in each other's footsteps. So I was the first qualified and then Louis came on board. Louis spoke to me first before he spoke to Jay. He said, I want to become a trainer. How do I go about it? I said, right, Jay's the man to talk to, but you have to be committed. It's not something, understand that his name's, on the line here, his reputation's on the line. If you mess up, it makes him look, look bad. So if you're going to do this, make sure you follow it through and you, you stick to it. So when Louis became a PT, I was already halfway through 
you know what I mean? Like Jay coached me through what I what what I am today. So then I could then start teaching Louis. So when I was learning, I was also teaching Louis alongside me as well. So anything that I learned, I was passing down to Louis. And then same with same with Badger, um, with Badger when Badger got qualified, everything Jay passed down to me, I passed down to them to short because what we're trying to do, we're trying to shorten that space time it takes for them to learn and to get to to where we are. Because the way we see it is, and it's always the same thing. If a team, you're the only strongest as your, they always say you, you're strongest as your weakest member. So we're only going to elevate if all of us put in the same work and represent the same level of standards. So there's no point in Jay being the, the best trainer like in Manchester and then his trainers underneath him are dog shit. No. Because then how's Jay, how's Jay Seven going to grow? Because it, 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 he's the only so the fact that he is now developed three trainers that are just as good as Jay but in their own type of way the business is going to continue elevating because now you've got three people that represent the same level of work the same work ethic we are putting the same type of work in regards with what we do within our own train, training sessions within our training session with our clients we all have to put in that same representation of work if one of us slack we're on each other's cases. So if I go through a path where I'm 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 falling off my training, I know for a fact it won't take long for Badger, for Louis or Jay, for one of them to be on my case and say to me, Kino, you need to fix up. You've not been training as much. You need to get back on track. I know because we watch each other like that. If Louis and Badger are doing something, I think, do you know what? Nah, they can do better than that. I'm on their case and vice versa. We all, because we all know what it takes to get to where we want to be. We all know that we need to continue going together. So there's no there's no selfishness out there. So we all try and help each other. In, no matter what, we all share and promote each other's things. We all try and give each other constructive constructive criticism in regard to whatever we do, whether it's going to hurt the feelings or not, because we know that that's what it's going to take for us to get to where we need to be. We need to continue that mentality and that way of thinking because Jay's instilled that us, instilled that into us from the start, from the get go. He's always said to us that the only way gonna, the only way we're gonna grow is if we're as good as each other, is if we represent the same level as work as each other. There's not one person that should be outworking somebody else, or everyone should be that neck and neck. Everyone should be up there. If somebody's hanging on that coke, and we've had to do that in the past, where we've had to sort of cut people off because it's not about just sitting there and then just living off the limelight where we put in all the work and then everyone else gets the praise for it. Because it does take, we sacrifice so much what people don't see. Sacrifice time away from home life, away from our family and our kids. We see a lot of you guys more than we do our own family. Yeah, I know. I know how long you lot spend in that fucking gym. We, we, I mean, sacrifice is true. Jay doesn't see Mason until the weekend, majority of the time. Same with me and my kids and my missus. We don't, and Badger's got a, um, a daughter, a little girl on the way now, and he's going to see that side of things that with this job comes a lot of sacrifices, a lot, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. But then the rewards that come with it, it's amazing, Stu, because you, you sort of fall in love with it. You When you fall in love with this, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. And that's literally what it comes down to. Falling with health and fitness and everything within your whole life, your, your whole your home life, work life, everything will then start to fall in place. It just sets you up. Yeah, well, you can see by the way you talk that you're falling in love with it. Falling in love with it. It's been a fucking treat listening to you speak, Keanu. I appreciate it. Appreciate real, real passionate about it. And you, that, that, that's all I was getting at before when I was saying let people see that side of it as well. Don't just show them you're working out. Let people see. How yeah, let people, people see. And I... Uh, with the uh, with the J7 thing, I remember when J7 was a idea on a piece of paper for a workout that he would try on us in classes. Was that when he first did his um, DVD? Yeah, I'm on it. Oh yeah, I've got to say when he did it. Now I know that, and in like ten years time, I'll be like saying to someone, oh, "I remember when that KH Fitness was just an idea on a piece of paper." Idea. Talking about and that's the thing. And if everything starts off as just an idea. Definitely and it come. depends on how badly you really want it. And I I know how badly I want it. And I'm going to do everything I can to 
to get to where I need to be, Stu. So yeah, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna keep the same mentality and I'm gonna try and pass that on to every client, every member, every person that I meet. I'm gonna try and pass that same type of thinking onto them. Perfect. Well, tell everybody who's listening where they can actually find you on social media then. So guys, if you wanna find me, which is Kilo, also known as KH Fitness, I'm on Instagram. I've got two accounts, so I'm on Kilo Henry, which is my original J7 account. And for my KH Fitness account, it is just KH Fitness. I'm on there. You'll see everything I have to offer in regards with PT and classes, boot camps, and programs. Okay. Make sure you follow, share, like, recommend to friends. And yeah. And um, shout out to the um, Dads and Lads pod- podcast group, um, guys. Okay. Give them a big shout out as well. And give them a follow. Yeah. We'll put it in the. Uh in the description of the, the show description if it, we'll, we'll tag it all in and link it all in so okay uh so people can just click it when they come on the in okay on, mate. on the show so perfect keno thanks for coming on mate thank you very much mate thank you boys thank you Sean. <laughs> thank you mate take care see you later see you in a bit see you in a bit bye 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 oh not gone yet going no. now yes sean good that one eh? yeah he's passionate isn't he he talks a lot yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, we've gone long there, mate. Real long. But yeah, I thought that was real, real good. I wasn't expecting him to be so up for it. And, and do you know what I mean? We don't normally see that side of him, do we? I mean, we know Kino yeah. pretty well. And we don't normally we don't normally see that side of him because he's obviously, when we see him, he's normally working and we're just having a chat around the gym. But it was really good to see him like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so KH Fitness 93, we'll get that app when it comes out and everything. You got anything to say about it, Sean? We're good to... The boot camps were tough for people. Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah, he does his good boot camps and all that. But where can people find us, mate? That's a lads. Insta at that's a lads. That's a lads pod. Twitter at that's a lads. Facebook group at that's a lads pod. Email at that's a lads pod. At Gmail. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah, everything's just dads and lads pod really on social media and we're on YouTube, we're everywhere, we're, we're, we're growing as well. So, everyone, like say, go and give Kino a follow and tell him that you've seen him on here and that you think he's a legend and all that. But thanks for listening and we'll see you again soon. Take care. See you Sunday. <laughs>